Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to use Premiere Pro when you have an object that's moving in your video that you need to mask out. Perhaps it's a person walking by, you don't have a model release, or you don't have a release to use that particular um, person's face, or it could be a logo, a license plate, anything that's you know in your video, you want to use that clip, but there's something in the video you can't show. It could even be something around your house, on your desk, you know, with your address on it, your you know, social security number, credit card number, whatever. Again, you need to use that clip, but you don't want to show that information. Well, luckily in Premiere Pro CC, we've got motion tracking for the effects that's automatic. That's the best part. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. I'm going to show you one where we're using it to hide something, like I just mentioned all those examples, and one you probably weren't thinking about. Let's go ahead and try it. All right, so I've got a couple clips here. We've got some musicians, some rappers here that are walking down the street. And then we got another clip of them coming from, you know, another side, um, another side of the sidewalk. And let's go ahead and just drag one of those clips into the sequence area to create a sequence automatically. So now if we were to play this clip uh, just by hitting the space bar, we can hear the director giving directions, telling someone to back up just a little bit, and then they just walk by. You know, that's what they were instructed to do. However, let's say for the sake of example that for whatever reason you needed to mask out one of the two faces. Like in other words, we can't use his image. We're really only focused on this guy. We don't know who this guy is. We don't have permission to do it. So let's take him out of the equation. Let's make him unidentifiable. You see this in news broadcast all the time. So let's uh, do this by going to our effects panel. And in the effects panel, uh, luckily, the, you know, they're nicely categorized. But when you're looking for an effect, it's usually faster just to type in the name of it if you know which one it is. Also, I'm in the effects control panel uh, at the top here. So in the effects panel, I'm going to just go ahead and type in fast blur. That's the one I'm looking for. And there it is, fast blur. I'm just going to now drag it right on top of the clip itself. Now, of course, um, that will, if it had had a blur effect, it would have blurred the entire clip. So nothing would be recognizable. But since the blurriness is set to zero by default, uh, we don't see any effect on the clip at all. But what I want to do before I crank up the blurriness is I actually want to create a mask around that person's face. Now, luckily, if it's a face, you can pretty much just use the ellipse tool. You can just draw an oval over the face. We get the idea. You're not trying to mask it exactly to the person's face shape. And um, that would work out fine in this case. However, recently in uh, Premiere Pro CC, we got the ability to draw custom masks. So just using your Bezier pen tool, you could actually get something that's pretty sophisticated around the subject that you're trying to draw. So in this case, I will just use the oval. Um, and of course, that will put an oval on the screen and I can now direct it to uh, my subject. So I'm just gonna pull it up and pull it in and pull it in again and then pull it down, giving Premiere Pro ample enough space to work with that. Now, I, this, that's the first step. Second step of using this effect is to turn up the blurriness. In other words, blur to your desired result. So I can draw, you know, completely <laughs> take his head off. That's a little too blurry, a little creepy. Or I can just blur it down just enough so we don't see who it is, but we still see that it's a person. So again, you blur to taste. All right, so now that we've done that, the way we tell it to do this tracking automatically, because he's walking, that mask is just standing still right now. So he's gonna walk right out of the mask if we don't do anything else. But Luckily, we have a play button and a re rewind button or backwards button. So we could play forward and have it track forward or play backwards if we were trying to track backwards in a clip. So we want to go forward. We'll just click play. Now, what it's doing is the video will play and now it's processing the tracking. So even when he tilts his head down, the mask moves down a little bit for the tilt. And as he keeps walking, the mask is going to walk or come forward with him. It'll get larger with him as well. It's trying to keep track of his face as it moves. So you just wait for that process to finish for as much of the clip that you're going to use and you're good to go. That's it. 
even after this process is done, like if he gets closer and you say, oh, I can identify him, you can still crank up the blurriness after the fact or turn it down if you need to, your choice. But this is a godsend for people that need to do this kind of work in video. Now it's just as easily as a couple of clicks as I've shown here. And as you see, it's doing it for the video as he walks by. All right, now, um, here are a couple of gotchas. If somebody walks in front of him, then the track could lose its place. Like in other words, it's obscured, it thinks he's gone, it may not pick up where it left off. Or if the video, and I think in this case, the video zooms back, and then you know it may lose track at that point as well. But as you can see, it's doing a really good job of tracking. Now, in the cases where it could lose track, all you'd have to do, let it finish rendering, and then scrub back to that spot. Okay, look, it's, see, it, it kept up with it. Now, the first time I tried this, it didn't, but you just scrub back to that spot, and then you just adjust the mask and hit play again, and it will process those frames forward. So it will do a good, good job of keeping your subject obscured or highlighted, if you want, as the mask goes by. Now, so he walked in front, the two walk off, the mask just says, hey, I'm going to sit here in the corner because I don't know what to do. And at that point, you could you know, either crop or delete those frames out, and away you go. All right, so that's it. Uh, if we go back in time now, we can click to unselect the mask, and the processing is complete. So we hit play in real time. That mask is applied and working in real time, obscuring his face as he walks closer, as the camera goes back. And hold it right here. If I want it to, I could say, no, 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 that's not blurry enough. And I can blur it more if I really needed to obscure who that was. I could blur it even more and say, no, 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 I don't want to see any of that. And it would continue working that way. I don't have to re-render it just because I blurred it more. So that's the prime example that we see all the time. We see this on TV. We see it in the movies. We see it everywhere. But there's another use for this. You don't always have to use it to make something go away or hide something. You could actually use it to draw attention to something. Use it the opposite way. So for example, I've got, if I head back over to my project bin here, I've got another clip on a, another timeline. Let's go ahead and open that up. And here are the same two guys walking by and they're just gonna do the same thing. They're walking and laughing and having a good time going by uh, while the videographer is capturing this. But what I want to do is apply a different effect. So let's go to our effects panel. Let's go to black and white. There it is. There's the black and white image control effect. And I can just drag that on my clip. And the whole clip turn, turns black and white, just like it's supposed to. However, I could draw a mask and around whoever I want it to be around. So let's say we want it around this area of the video. And you can do more than one mask, by the way. I could uh, apply that effect or apply another mask if I wanted to um, just by clicking the mask, it, the, clicking the effect itself and drawing again or drawing with the tools again to apply another one. Okay, but we have the one and this time I'm going to do the opposite. I want everything else to be black and white except his face. I want his face to be in full color. So we just invert the mask. And now we hit play on here once again, and it will start processing that mask, keeping everything in that ellipse in color. So try it on different effects that you want to highlight in the video or people you want to highlight. Maybe in this case, everything else is blurred out and it's just this person's face that you're keeping in focus. Uh, I can see using this in weddings. I can see using this in all kinds of videography where you're trying to draw attention to a moving subject. A bride's walking down an aisle. You're keeping everybody else in black and white, but you're keeping the bride in color. Again, you're going to have to draw the mask to keep it more sophisticated. But as you can see, you can have a lot of fun with these effects and make your video stand out even more. So with that, take care. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.